Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. My name's Paul, and I'm pleased to eat you. Now, Army of the Dead is now out, and the movie has a lot of questions hanging over it. The film is packed with weird little details that hint towards UFOs, robot zombies, time loops, and even the possibility that Van Der Rohe is actually Zeus. Over the weekend, I dedicated myself to unearthing the answers, and after compiling interviews with Zack Snyder, I've come up with some theories and answers to the questions that have no doubt been picking your brains. Full spoilers ahead, so if you haven't had a chance to check it out yet, then I recommend that you check out now. Drop the thumbs up as that's a no-brainer, and make sure you subscribe to the channel as this is where we explain everything from A to World War Z. Terrible. Now, with that out of the way, thank you for clicking this, thank you for sticking with me. Now let's get into the breakdown of Army of the Dead. Okay, so the movie opens with the military transporting the alpha zombie Zeus across the desert. This convoy picks the character up from Area 51, which is of course synonymous with aliens. For decades, people have theorized that the secret military base of the Nevada desert was set up after an alien spaceship crash landed there, and since the 50s, there's been a lot of mystery surrounding the location. Extraterrestrials have too been linked with zombies for a long time, and recently it was revealed by Robert Kirkman that the outbreak in The Walking Dead was caused by a space spore that fell to Earth. Night of the Living Dead 2 had theories in it that said the zombie outbreak may have been caused by NASA shooting down a satellite on its way to Venus. Due to the radiation that it was carrying, it returned to Earth and brought the dead back to life. This radiation could be what kills people upon being bit, and from there it may reanimate their corpse. Much like the two soldiers we meet in the opening, fans have been theorizing over exactly what's going on with the virus, and because of the location, we can guess that it was caused by experiments carried out at Area 51. You can also see two bright white lights in the sky hovering over the base, and these shoot off as the transport makes its way out of the area. 51. Now, personally, I think that the undead are actually created through hybrid human and alien DNA, and there is some evidence for this in the movie. When Zeus is shot at the end of the film, within the red blood that squirts from his head, we can also catch flashes of blue. When the fetus is pulled from Zeus's ghoul friend, if you look closely, you can see that its blood vessels beneath its skin are glowing blue as well. Whilst Zeus and the Alphas do look like your typical zombie, I actually think there's more going on than meets the eye. Personally, I think that the characters aren't your typical shamblers, and they're actually living creatures that just appear to be like the undead. They are gods, a new form of human that's an alien hybrid who's able to reproduce. I believe that the government were carrying out experiments at Area 51 in order to create a new kind of soldier, and after perfecting this, they went to transport Zeus across the country to the next stage, but the vehicle was destroyed and the Alpha was unleashed. Martin was then sent in to retrieve the head of the bride, and using this, they'd still be able to carry on their work. To cover up what happened, the government would then nuke the site so that all the evidence was buried, and in my opinion, if you're looking for what caused the virus, then it was aliens. Now, along with these blue-blooded alphas, we can also catch a robot zombie. Mikey Guzman shoots one in the casino at one point, and after electricity bursts from its head, we can also see a Terminator-esque skull underneath its skin. When they die, they end up robotin, which is like rotten, but with robot, uh, never mind. And Snyder recently teased about what was going on with this in a Q&A session with Netflix. He indeed confirmed that our eyes weren't deceiving us, and that this is, in fact, a zombie robot. When discussing the point of these mechanical monsters, the director stated, I had the idea from the beginning that these zombies were going to embody an evolution. They were on their way to becoming something else, not stagnant like the zombies were used to. It was a way to make them fresh, while still delivering on the zombie canon in some ways. I really wanted this sort of weird ambiguity to their origins, which of course we'll explore in the animated series Army of the Dead Lost Vegas. Without giving too much away, if you pay close attention, there's a number of zombies that are clearly not zombies. You see normal zombies, and then you see some robot zombies. Are they monitors that the government has placed among the zombies to monitor them? Are they technology from the other world? what's happening there. So yeah, this will be explored in the upcoming anime, but judging by the last couple of sentences by Snyder, I do think it will be revealed that their government plants put in to monitor the situation. The nuke deadline being moved up is a weird one, and they could have been monitoring things from the inside and moved the missile launch time up after spying on the group. Like Snyder says, there's a number of them in the film, 
I think I also caught one when Zeus is carrying the bride in. You can notice to the left of the screen that there are glowing blue eyes and a shambler, which may be indicating that this one is indeed a government plant. Let me know if you spotted any others, as I'd love to see if there's more dotted about the film. Now as for the time loop, this is sort of being cleared up by Snyder 2, and in a recent live stream with Film Junkie, he discussed the bodies that the characters come across in the vault. We can see that they're wearing the same clothes as the group, and it's theorised by Van Der Rohe that this is actually one infinite loop in which they are living out the same events over and over and over. There are some subtle hints that there are several versions that have already attempted to take the money, and when the group arrive at the table in the casino, we see some corpses slumped over it. Scott Ward asks if those are another set of blueprints to the safe, and this is confirmed, but then sort of glossed over. So, there are at least three versions of the group that we see in the film. When talking to Film Junkie, Snyder said, I'll also say that, like, there's a chance, and I'm not saying this is 100% true, and in some ways it's not, but the group at the table, I mean, it's pretty subtle, but that's them also at the table as well. They get farther every time, like this is the time that they made it all the way to the money. So, very strange things going on in the movie, and because of the way that the film is set up, it's almost impossible to fully guess exactly what's going on here. However, it is possible that the nuke, which always ends the situation, carries a lot with it. Nukes, atoms, and the study of them also tends to lend itself to the observation of tachyons, which are particles that actually have the ability to move backwards through time. Snyder played upon this notion in his film Watchmen, and Army of the Dead could be making a nod to that too. It is possible that every time the nuke goes off, it resets the situation and sends the group back to the start where they make their way through Vegas, carrying out slightly different choices each time. There are potentially thousands of versions of this film that we haven't seen, and the final one in which everything goes the way it should is the one that we witness. I even have a theory that aliens are pulling the strings in order for the virus to get further out, and the one situation in which they win is when Van der Rohe gets to the vault, is safe from the nuke, and is then able to go on to become the Omega to Zeus's Alpha. Now another question that I had, and I know some of you did, is how the hell did Van der Rohe survive the nuclear fallout caused by the blast? Even with the safe offering shelter, as soon as he stepped out into the wasteland, the radiation would have killed him within minutes. However, it is possible that because he was infected, that he was able to survive this. As we've discussed in the video, radiation could have been crucial to causing the undead to rise, and thus with the virus flowing through his veins, he may now be immune to the devastation caused by the nuke. As for Van der Rohe, I have seen a lot of theories suggesting that he might actually be Zeus himself, and the end of the movie might loop around into him ending up in the container at the start of the film. Now up top, I think we should clarify this and say that Van der Rohe and Zeus are played by two totally different actors. The theory states though that because Zeus has similar hair to Van der Rohe when we first meet him, that he may actually be a version of the character. When the Alpha arrives at Vegas, we also see that he's inspired by the statue of Zeus in front of the Olympus Casino. Now strangely at this point, Amari Hardwick's name pops on the screen, suggesting that he too could be playing Zeus. The Alpha and Omega typically means the beginning and end, and thus this could be one big loop in which the Alpha creates its Omega, which goes on to create it. There's this idea of birth and resurrection, and Van der Rohe even hints to this when discussing the hero's journey by Joseph Campbell. This almost cyclical way of telling a story involves a character travelling into the abyss, or what's referred to as the belly of the beast. They have a revelation that takes them on a path of transformation, and Van der Rohe realising he's been bitten could be that moment. A shout out to Flix in the City for suggesting that radiation hitting the safe could have somehow changed and mutated Van der Rohe even more, and perhaps helped to create a new kind of zombie. We never actually see Van der Rohe get bitten, so there's a lot of things potentially going on with him. Jan also said it's possible that, when Van der Rohe emerges from the vault, that he's actually in another timeline where things start all over again. It's quite a cool little fan theory, and I'd definitely love to hear what you think, and if there's any other questions or thoughts that you have on the film. Make sure you comment below and let me know, and as a thank you for interacting with the video, you'll be entered into a prize drawn the 30th of May, in which we're giving away three copies of the Godzilla vs Kong collection. All you have to do to be on the chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on, and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the theories. The winners of last month's competition are on screen right now, so if that's you, then message me on Twitter at HeavySpoilers. 
you want something else to watch, then make sure you check out our breakdown of the film, including the news about the prequels, sequels, and what we took from the ending. With that out of the way, thank you for sitting through the video. I've been Paul, I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.